Hi, I'm Paul Potratz, and today I'm going to go over a Helderberg Bespoke Defender. This is Derwent the D90. But before I get into that, let me explain the word bespoke and what it means. Bespoke is a British word for custom. For example, if you want a bespoke suit, it's a custom suit that's tailored to fit you specifically. And that's exactly what we do at Helderberg. So this Defender, being a D90, has a 300 TDI motor in it, which is a turbo diesel that's fuel injected. The reason that we use the 300 TDI is because it's highly reliable. The longevity is amazing. I've seen many of them go for more than a half million miles with minimal repair. It is a diesel motor, therefore it's very efficient on fuel. You will get an average of upper 20s to low 30s miles per gallon on the diesel motor. It's also a cooler running motor, therefore it creates that longevity, meaning that it will last a long time. You don't have spark plugs, you don't have those regular tune-ups, so cost of ownership is much lower. But with this 300 TDI and Derwent, we've done a number of modifications as we do on all Helderberg Defenders, and that's one of the key components of what makes Helderberg different. We only do the 300 TDI or a TD5 if you live in Canada. We don't do V8 Corvette swaps or Cummings swaps. We keep our numbers original. We, in other words, we keep the vehicle numbers matching. Therefore, a Helderberg Defender will actually increase in value versus if you do an engine swap, those vehicles significantly decrease in value. Your resale value just isn't there. Plus, your co cost of ownership is much higher when you do an engine swap. The 300 TDI is known for the reliability. That's the engine that they use when they're doing the Outback and they're going through the Safari because they're super simple to work on. Parts are easy to get. You can have basically any part you would want at your doorstep within 24 to 48 hours. There's a number of parts suppliers, Rovers North, Lucky 8 Off-Road, I mean the list goes on, Rimmer Brothers, so you can have whatever you want. So parts are easy to get, but the best part Parts are very affordable for the 300 TDI, and there's a lot of different things. Not that you'll need them, but it's just having that peace of mind, that comfort, knowing that. For example, a water pump on one of these vehicles is $62. You will not be able to find a part, whether it's a Chevy or a Ford or a Dodge, like that with that type of price. Finding a mechanic to work on these vehicles is very easy. All you have to do is find an independent shop that works on European vehicles, specifically diesel motors, so that makes it very easy. If they work on a Mercedes or a Volvo, then they can work on one of these. You can even have a mechanic that works on a diesel for a Ford or a Dodge work on this vehicle. It's a four-cylinder turbo diesel and again, very efficient, not only for fuel, but the longevity of it. So Derwent, let's get into it. Let's get into the build. This will actually help you design your own build, understanding what are some of the options you can pick from. This design is a beach cruiser with a little bit of a military feel to it. So the client came to me and said, I want you to design something for me that's classic, that has some modern conveniences, meaning some modern technology, some modern performance, and that's definitely what we've done. And that's one of the things that we do differently is we take a lot of the classic elements, but we modify the motor, the transmission, the drivetrain, the braking, Apple CarPlay, the heated seats, and so on and so forth. So you have the classic looks, but you actually have that modern performance, the way it drives, the way it handles, and also the comfort. So looking at the front, these are all options that you would choose. So starting with the grill, this is one of the designs of the grill. This is a metal grill that's been stamped out. It has that classic look and it has the cast badge here. We have about eight different grill choices to pick from. I always try to stick with a metal grill versus that very popular plastic grill that's the slats that's made by a company of KBX. I feel it's a little weird that we do all of this work. One of our builds is around 3,000 hours and that we do all of this custom work and then we put a mass produced plastic grill on the front. So I always try to persuade clients to do something a little unique and a little different because it is a bespoke build. So about eight different grills. The front bumper is a galvanized steel bumper. It's a very solid bumper. You'll notice it does not have the driving lights in it, 
we did put the driving lights right here, which I'll show you in a second. So we have about eight different bumpers. You're gonna be hearing the number of eight because I'm rounding here. But bumper-wise, steel galvanized, we have the steel ones that have the oval LED driving lights that have the rubber end caps. I'm not a big fan on those, but we do have those. We also have winch bumpers. We also have more aggressive bumpers that are the tubular steel bumpers. So you have different options. We also have nudge bars or bull bars, which you'll notice on, for example, a Niren, or if you look at Emma. A Niren is a D90 soft top, and Emma is a D110. So go to Helderberg.com. You'll see more pictures and videos of not only Derwent, but a lot of our other builds. So the nudge bar, bull bar, that goes right here. It's like a rubber piece that goes right there. That's an option. Winches, option. Additional lighting, like lighting on the nudge bar is an option. Roll bar lights, all options. But let's stay focused on this one here. Not let my, let me get carried away here. So this metal grill right here, and then the metal headlight surrounds. The, we actually cut these, and you'll see a lot of parts that we do run through the CNC machines. So we did the little venting here, and then this is all metal, and this is metal too. This is an option that we can paint this body color or paint this a different color, leave this like a stainless steel color. So a lot of different variations. These marker lights, you'll notice this is clear. If you look at some of the other builds, you'll see the one like, for example, orange and clear, and then in the rear where it's the, the heritage style, or you can see them in smoke. So you have three different choices when it comes to these marker lights, clear, orange and clear, or the smoke style. So some different options here. So for some trivia, so you guys know when we're talking about your build, just so you know, the hood, we call them a hood, right, in the States, it's actually called a bonnet. So bonnet, you'll notice that we almost always use the Puma bonnet. Puma means this hump. It creates, it's a modern feel. It almost looks G-Wagon like, but it has the hump and it modernizes the look. So with this bonnet, we decide the choice of this. 99% of my clients go with the Puma bonnet. These fenders, of what we would want to call them, are actually called wings. So the wing, uh, you have the option to do checker plate on top. It's not a diamond plate, but it's a checker plate. So I will warn you, if you don't do the checker plate, whenever you take it in for an oil change, they have to be, you can see how it indents. It's, it can actually bend easily. It is aluminum. Uh, moving on, billet aluminum vents on top. So we have the silver, we have polished, we have black. I prefer the billet aluminum because it's a real metal. Of course, we do have the other ones that are made by KBX that match the plastic grill that are plastic that have little scoops. So the question is, do you need the ones with the little scoops? Is that going to help anything? And it doesn't. It's pretty much for looks. And then moving on the side here, uh, you'll notice that these are called eyebrows arches. And just looking at the paint color, this is a Keswick green is what we started with, but we did a different primer and we did a pearl coat. So it doesn't actually match a traditional British Keswick, but it's pretty close. This is a custom mixed color. So moving on, well, let's talk about paint color. That's probably, well not paint color, but paint, that's probably one of the top three things that when I have visitors, they come and they talk about a Helderberg Defender where they've gone to other builders and they've looked at their builds and then they come look at a Helderberg, is the paint quality, the perfection of the paint, the thickness of the paint, the deepness of the paint and how the paint looks. When you're designing or when you're building a vehicle, that is a great way for a builder to save money and kind of cut some corners is when it comes to paint. We don't do that. So what I mean by that, preparation. It's several hours to prepare the vehicle, so the paint, because if you don't start with a good base foundation, your paint will never be ideal. So a great way to save money is in preparation. Another way to save money is to not put the paint on as, as many layers as you should or doing a clear coat. We don't cut any of those corners. We're really known for our paintwork, and it definitely shows not only in the pictures, but when you see it in person. So color-wise, you can pretty much choose any color you want. We can do a metallic, which metallic is known to show the lines a little better, or you can do a non-metallic. That's what this is, is a non-metallic. It does have a little bit of pearl in it, which is also a great color. And then you can do a matte color. So I will probably, 
tell you, though, the matte color was very popular for a number of years and starting to die in popularity. So if you're going to get the Defender and possibly sell it or pass it on to your children or whatever, then you always want to work on increasing the value of it. And that would be saying, well, let's make sure it, does, it never looks dated. A matte color could look dated. So paint wise, when we're doing the design, any color you want, I work with you on the colors. But when we're doing the design out, we can paint the bonnet a different color than the body. We can paint the arches a different color than the body. But you'll see most of my builds, the arches are the same color as the body because it really creates a sleek line. It looks like it was part of the vehicle that was not an add-on part. I feel like when you paint the arches a different color, it looks like it was added on after the fact. And it kind of doesn't flow as well. But when you do paint the arches, it can give the look of a more rugged build. So it depends on the style of the build and everything has to match. And I think that's one of the things that you will see. I always hear, that the things I hear a lot about a Helderberg Defender is it's artwork. It looks like a piece of art. Or it's everything flows and everything looks nice. It's not overdone. It doesn't look like it was a Tonka truck. And that's making sure that everything really does work and flow. And that's one of the ways you do that is with paint. So again, this is a Keswick style, and then it has the soft top on it, the canvas soft top. You'll notice that this is an internal system for the soft top. It does not have a roll bar on it. So if it had the roll bar, you would see a black frame bar that would actually come out of the side of the roof over here and would wrap around the top of the windscreen and go across here, and then would have an attachment point on the front of the fenders where the fender is actually cut and the bar goes all the way down to the frame and is bolted to the frame. So our roll bars are really functional. Again, this one does not have a roll bar system. It just has the hoop system for the soft top. Soft tops, you do have a couple different options. This is a standard soft top. Another soft top option would be where it actually has the windows on top down the sides that looks really favors that hard top defender. And then uh, the other option would be in the back to have the oval windows on either side. So color wise, generally it's a tan, a black, or a dark brown. Those are the three colors for the soft top, but it's also designing. So kind of moving around the outside of the truck a little more. We already talked about the grill, the rope, easy thing. Uh, other things that you would decide is, do you want it lifted? This is a standard ride height. Of course, we could lift it, three inches being about the max before you have to get into a major investment. And quite honestly, you don't really need it that high. Chances are, because the higher you go, the drivability will actually suffer. So this one would work well for a daily driver, even though it does have a soft top. With a soft top, you will get more noise than you would with a hard top. So, so options, suspension, we have, our uh, road suspension, which is a nice suspension, a nice dual purpose suspension. And then we have our ultimate road suspension, which is really comfortable. We move up to the Bilstein shocks, progressive springs, it handles really well. And again, it will do both off-road and on-road. It will just do better, it will do better on both situations. And then of course the lifted one, which you can see on Enzo, the D130, Maxim, the D90, those vehicles are lifted. But when you lift, not as comfortable to drive on the road, not something you would want to drive daily. So three different suspension types. Engine type, with the 300 TDI, you have three different levels of our engine type too, meaning whether or not we're adding a VNT turbo and a different exhaust system and all that. So just know there's three different levels, the top one being the performance max tune that we offer. Uh, moving on to the side a little more, wheels and tires. That's another thing that we option. This is a BF Goodrich KM3, which is a mud terrain tire. The tire you will see on most of our builds is a BF Goodrich K02, which is an all-terrain tire. This tire is designed more for off-road. You'll get a little bit of road noise on it. It's not too bad. Uh, Longevity is going to be a little less. This is probably about a 25,000 mile tire versus the BF Goodrich K02 is about a 50,000 mile tire. It is quieter and it's a great tire. Painted wheels on this one. So this is the steel 16 inch wolf wheel. We painted them to match the body just as we painted the back of the mirrors too to match the body. So steel wheel, 
or you can go with an alloy. We have several different wheel options, whether you want the alloys, the very common sawtooth you'll see in a lot of our builds, or bead lockers on our lifted trucks. So a lot of different wheel choices, probably about 10 to 12 different wheels that you would choose. Uh, tire options, we really, we stick to about three. BF Goodrich KO2, the BF Goodrich KM3, which you see here, and then the Maxxis Trepidor, which is a competition mud tire that looks really aggressive that you would see on Enzo or Maxim. So that's the tire portion, but then moving into the brakes. So you have two different options on brakes. We do four wheel disc brakes on all of our builds, which gives you more stopping power. It's a modern brake design, but then you can upgrade the brakes to the big reds. And that's a Heldeberg exclusive. The big reds, what it gives you is six pistons in the front, four pistons in the back, cross drilled rotors, and the surface area is about 33% larger, which means your stopping, your stopping distance is about half the length of our standard brakes. The standard brakes are completely fine, completely acceptable, but if you want more stopping power, then it's definitely the big red. If you're lifting the truck, like we've done on Enzo or Maxim, then I would highly recommend that you do go with the big reds because the tire, the unswung, unswung weight of the tire and the wheel is much heavier. The tires are about 90 pounds, the wheels are about 50 pounds. So just all of that force, plus the additional roll cage and everything else, you do need more stopping power. Um, moving into it a little more, if we kind of move down and look into details, some things that we talk about are the hinges. So hinges, these are billet aluminum, hinges on the windscreen, hinges on the bonnet. Uh, the vents are billet aluminum. So all billet aluminum. It really gives a contrast and it says bespoke. It says custom built. So we do this in a silver, we do it in a brushed, and we do it in a black anodized. So hinge design, most of the time when you see them, they are our hinges. And you'll see that we fabricate a lot of parts on our, for our builds. And that's one of the things that we do with Helderberg is we make a lot of parts because we want to make one of a kind when we're building these defenders. The vents under the windscreen are actually functional. Those actually flip up and then you have airflow into the cabin. It's not saying that's your air conditioner, you need that because on a Helderberg Defender, we manufacture our own air conditioning system. So if you're looking at the pictures on Helderberg.com, and if you look at, for example, Emma, the D110, you'll notice that there's no underslung air conditioning unit. And that's because we've manufactured our own AC and heat unit that is combining the two. So your defrost is much more efficient and your air conditioning is much more efficient. And so is your heating. So we've really increased the BTUs and meaning that it will heat and it will actually heat or cool the entire cabin, even if you have a D110. So headlights, I mentioned that a minute ago. So headlight designs, generally we have about three different headlight designs. This one is the ring light, which is really the whole idea behind that light was to create like a piece of jewelry. So it's just a ring light. This becomes your driving light instead of having driving lights in the bumper and a very bright light. Our other designs you can see, for example, like Enzo the D130, Elizabeth the D110, or Mare the D90, you would see a different headlight design. So headlights are an option. I'm gonna mention roll bar roll cages one more time because this is important. When you're building a D90 soft top, we have the option to do the internal loop system that does not have a roll bar, or we can do the external NAS roll bar system, which you can see on the red D90 called Santorini. That's the external roll cage system. So that's one of the things you have to decide. The external roll bar gives a little more rugged feel, a little more almost Jeepish like, and this one is a little more of a classic feel is what it is. Probably one of the biggest questions I get asked about a Defender, a D90, what does it drive like? Because the vast majority of my clients have never even driven one. I will tell you, the D90 drives a lot like a Jeep, except it feels more planted. Other questions, can I drive it daily? Can I use it as a daily driver? And yes, you can. With a soft top, you're gonna have more noise, more of the wind noise, it's just a part, part, natural part of it. With a hard top, it will be much quieter. So soft top wise, how hard is it to remove? It's really easy to remove. 
you can remove this entire soft top system in about five minutes. And then you can put it back on in about 10 minutes. One person can do this project. It would be easier with two to put it back on, but taking it off is a one person job. Very easy, fold it up, store it in the back, you're good. Uh, the other option with this soft top system is you can have this soft top, plus you can have what's called the bimini top. A bimini top is the just a smaller piece of canvas that goes over the driver and the passenger in the front, and then it just leaves the back area open. So you can have the two tops. Question I get asked a lot of times is, can I have a soft top and a hard top? And the short answer is no, not really. There is a couple manufacturers, but they're, uh, Attention to detail hasn't met our standards, therefore we don't offer it. Uh, to remove the hard top off of a D90, when you do that, it can be done, but when you remove it, you have the rear door that is a tall door in the back, so it really doesn't look well, plus you have the Alcantara suede. Uh, it's quite the project. It's something that I would say you probably don't even want to attempt. So when you're deciding a soft top, you have some other options. We talked about the top, internal rail system, or a roll bar system. The other part is the doors. So on the doors on the soft top, you'll notice that this door is a very traditional type door, meaning it has a door handle right here, it has the standard window, and the window rolls down like any other window. You can get power windows, you can get central door locks, but it's a standard up and down window. Your other option on a soft top, which again, you can see on Santorini, the D90, the red one, it has a old school series type door. It's a new door, which by the way, we replace the door so you don't get the galvanic corrosion, but it has an inset, a cut in, where it actually has a lever right here. And then the window is a, basically a, the window part will, you can remove it so you can have half doors but then the window is split right here. It's a window that slides back and forth. Looks really cool, looks really retro, but the problem is you only have half a window, and if you're going through a drive-through, you're kind of reaching back and through. It's, it's a little awkward, but you do have that option. When you go with the half door, the inside detail, which you'll see in a minute, like the door panels, which are really called door cards, you don't have as much detail with the door handle and all the leather on the door. And those half doors are also a little more, well, quite a bit more noisy than what these doors are. This is like a traditional style door. Uh, through all of them, all of our builds, whether it's a soft top or a hard top, we do add sound deadening. So, I mean, if you were to knock on a Helderberg Defender, you'll hear how it sounds very solid because we are doing extensive sound deadening. This one doesn't have as much sound deadening as our D90 hard top because it does have the soft top, but it does have sound deadening to it. So, door options and then the style of your top, if you want the hoop system or if you want the roll cage system, these are all options that you decide. Mirrors, you won't notice on, on this one is the standard mirror. We have other options on the mirror arms where we can do the black anodized, the brushed aluminum or the silver. And then we also offer puddle lights. So when you disengage the alarm system, do the central door locks, it shines a light on the ground beside the door. So that's an option. You can see that on Verbosca, the D90, of the different options of the mirror arms and the different options of the hinges. So going through the Defender and the build, what we do with Helderberg, this is a frame off, complete restoration from the ground up. It's easier for me to tell you what we don't replace than to tell you what we do replace. Because when I say we replace everything, we replace everything. The only thing we don't replace on the Defender is part of the body, the frame, and the engine block. And the reason for that is we're keeping all of those numbers matching because we, every one of our defenders are put through the British Heritage Registry. And what we're doing is we're getting the paperwork that tells the original color, it tells the number on the frame, the VIN number of the frame, the number on the, the body, the number on the engine. And we keep all of those matching numbers so you actually have a true British defender that is originally a left-hand drive defender. We don't buy defenders that are Santana's or Japanese defenders, South African defenders, or Turkish defenders. They don't appreciate in value. They're true, ours are true left-hand drive 
British Defenders, and that's all we do is left-hand drive. And again, we don't do the V8 engine swap conversions or anything like that. So those that are talking about what we don't replace, again, frame, but our frame, we go through it, we do a steam clean, we do a sandblast, we do an epoxy, we do a primer. So you can really see the frame, you can see the texture of the frame. There is no rust. These are brand new vehicles for all intents purposes, but we do start with a true British Defender. And the prices on our websites include the actual cost of the truck. And we have several trucks in stock in our warehouse. So when you're buying a Defender, we are giving you a VIN number and we're building a Defender. We do not take customers' Defenders in and restore them or build them for a number of reasons. One of the reasons is, we don't have time. A build takes about 12 to 14 months, over 3,000 hours for us, so we don't have time to work on other people's defenders. And the other thing is, too, when you're taking a defender in from an individual, you don't really know what you're getting, the quality, the integrity of it, so it could be a lot of work that you're not accounting for. Also, too, in the Helderberg build, some things that I really want you to do is when you look at our pictures and videos, when you're really trying to decide, why is Helderberg you know, a Helderberg. If you look at the lines and you look at all the lines in our builds, you'll notice that the lines are all correct, that everything is tight, and which is really unique and rare because keeping in mind, a Land Rover Defender was never built as a luxury car. It was never meant to be a luxury car. It was built as a truck for farmers. It's a farmer truck. These trucks are used on farms and that's what we're doing. We're buying them in Italy and Poland and Poland and France and or Italy, Poland, France is where we're buying them and we're buying a lot of them from farmers or they're traded into a dealership and when we get them a lot of times they have sheep fur in the back or they have grapes because they were on a sheep farm or they were in a winery or whatever it was and that's what it is. They are farm trucks. So for us to be able to get all the lines right for something that didn't even have the lines right in their original I think that says a lot to the build quality of what we're doing on these trucks. So exterior wise, I think I covered a lot of that. Um, mud flaps, I mean, these are true uh, Land Rover or heritage mud flaps. Um, and I'm jumping around a little bit here as I'm thinking about all that I need to cover on this. But um, what do we replace? I'll get back to that four-wheel disc brakes, the calipers, the rotors, the brake lines, the transmission is new, the transfer case is new, uh, the cylinder head's new, the injection pump is new, the alternator's new, the starter's new, the fan belt's new, the fan, the fan itself is new, the radiator's new, the intercooler's new, and it's a performance in intercooler design of ours. Um, the, the injectors are new, all the glass is new, the windshield wipers are new, the hinges are new, the carpet is new, the seats, we designed the seats specifically to you, so the seat, the foam, the springs, everything is new, it's a brand new vehicle. We are, you know, and when you see us doing, like the pictures, when I share the pictures on social media, you'll see that we disassemble the entire vehicle. Every part, these wings, fenders, but they're wings, they come off. The hood is off. The doors are off. The windshield is off. Everything is disassembled. You will not see a bunch of tape and paper on our builds because we disassemble everything. We're painting the back side, we're painting the front side, so you do not get that corrosion for many years down the road. So that's what makes a Helderberg Defender is the attention to detail. So let's move into the inside because it seems like everybody loves our interiors and uh, hopefully you're gonna like what I'm gonna show you now. So now we're at the side of the vehicle and we're gonna go in, but I briefly touched on the glass and how our glass is all new glass. The seals are new, the strips, the actual, uh, the actual felt strips inside the doors are all new. So we're replacing all of this stuff. It, again, and I can't point out enough that it's basically a new vehicle. One of the things that's unique to us is the glass is a thicker glass. And the thicker glass helps on the sound because the glass in the original Land Rover is thinner and it's also prone to scratches. So you'll see our glass is new, it's thicker, it's more durable, it does not have the scratches. And that's a way when you're doing a build that you can leave the original glass in, but it's going to have scratches, it's gonna have pitting and all that. It's just not gonna look fresh 
windshield wise is thicker and we have two options. You have the standard windshield, which we can also do tinted, and then you have the windshield that's heated. So if you live in a cold climate or somewhere where there's a, you know, a lot of moisture, then you probably want to opt for the heated windshield. You flip a switch and it heats up the windshield and will clear snow or clear the condensation quickly. So let's go ahead and look inside and talk about that. One of the things that you'll see in basically all of our all of our builds is we carry the outer color, the exterior color inside with the little strip here by the, the actual glove drawer or the glove tray. So we paint this in inside to match. This unit has the hi-fi audio system in it. So I do like having the Smith clock. Smith clocks are actually a British instrument and uh, you will see this years ago in a number of vehicles like Aston Martin and MG and Triumph and all that stuff. So it's really a flashback to, an an to years ago with this analog Smith clock that I like to put in there. We also have the options to put different switches here. So if you were opting for power windows, I'd put your power windows up here. So a switch there, a switch there. If you have the heated uh, windscreen, I'd either put the switch over on the dash, over on the other side lower, or I could possibly put it here. I try to minimize the number of switches. It looks a little too busy, in my opinion. And then I do have the heated seats here. So it does have heated seats. The seats do recline. Leather-wise, I have uh, three different options in leather. I have Scottish leather, where it's done in the Scottish tannery. And then I have Italian leather. And now we have a new Heldeberg exclusive leather that is a leather that uh, can take a lot of abuse if you have your dogs climbing in and out or if you have something in your pocket. It just doesn't prone to scratch. These don't scratch either. It's just uh, the Heldeberg leather is a little thicker leather. And the way to be able to tell that if you're on Heldeberg.com and looking at the different interiors is the headrest has the H logo embroidered into it that's the same color as the leather. It's a little hard to see, but that's a way to do it. Interior wise, I have three, well, four different seat choices, styles. This is the Puma seat, which is very comfortable. I have an MK2 seat. I have the original Defender seat, which is actually a seat that has the headrest that goes up and down. And then we have a sport seat. So four different options on seats. You have the option to do a diamond stitch, a basket weave, or no stitching at all. So if you want to see what the no stitching at all, look at Hayrod, the D110, or Anir and the D90 on Helderberg.com, and you'll see the seat style of what I'm talking about. This is the contrasting stitch. This is a chestnut leather, which is a very smooth leather, very nice leather. And then uh, it has the white stitch, but we can do different color stitching. It, it doesn't make a difference. So you have about 70 to 80 different leather choices when it comes to colors. And we can do a single tone leather, all solid one color, or we can do two tone where we can do a contrasting color, or we can do a leather and like, for example, a tweed, like a wool tweed. We can do that on the seats, the center cubby, and the door cards. I know you know this is a door panel, but it's a door card. This one again, chestnut leather, contrasting stitch, diamond stitch here, quilted pattern, roll up windows. We have the options here to do the stainless steel pegs. These are called pegs, the door locks, and then the stainless steel back plate. So it would match the door handle. So that's what's, so we have some options here. We can do some different designs when it comes to the door card leather. The door cards, what you'll notice is it's very plush. And that's because when we do the door cards, we cover it with a layer of foam and then we cover it with the leather. The back side of the door card is covered with butyl rubber and then foam and then plastic is put on the door. The doors are also filled with butyl rubber, multiple layers of butyl rubber, as is the entire body and the box itself, the seat boxes and everything. So we do a lot for sound deadening. Again, the soft top, not gonna be as quiet. There's just no way because it's canvas. But if it's a hard top, the entire inside of the vehicle is covered in multiple layers of butyl rubber and foam to bring down the sound noise. This does have a seven inch touch screen system that does have Apple CarPlay and Android Play. It has hands-free calling. Uh, it has Bluetooth, Spotify, so it has everything that you want. We do have the option to do a backup camera, even on a soft top. It's built into the 
the license plate light, the camera itself. On a hard top, we almost always put the backup camera on it. On the D90, not always, but on a D110, always. So uh, shifter boot matches the leather here. And then you have the option to do an aluminum shifter handle or shifter knob, or you can do the wood. This one is done in mahogany to match the rear cargo area, which is also a mahogany finish. Uh, steering wheels, we have two different, op well, few different options. This one is a style that you'll see with other builders too, but then we have a new style with an exclusive contract that we're doing walnut steering wheels by a, that are very, uh, just very decorative. And if you wanna see the centerpiece of it, I would say look at Hayrod, the D110, the pictures of that. It's a big piece of billet aluminum that's been polished out that's absolutely stunning. Uh, we can also do the leather wrapped steering wheels. Leather wrapped steering wheels actually are hand stitched. And here's the unique thing about the Defenders. Uh, or our defenders it, that I really want to point out that there's really not many parts that are picked off of a shelf. A lot of the parts that we're using are either fabrica fabricated by us or we're working with craftsmen, craftsmen that might be a one-man shop, a two-man shop, or even as large as a four to six-man shop. So that's something that I think you really have to keep in mind that it's not like, again, we're not picking things off of a shelf and putting a truck together that there's a lot of people that are at work building your Defender every little piece at a time. The exhaust system is our own unique design. We have two different exhaust systems. We have our performance tuned and we have our, our max tuned exhaust system. The one has a silencer, the other one doesn't. It doesn't make much sound, a sound difference. It just lets the exhaust flow a little freer is what it's doing. Uh, brake systems, I've talked about that, whether you want the big brake system, again, that's one of our own designs. Hinges, we have different designs on that. So interior is very plush. Carpet choices, you have black, you have red, you have blue, you have browns, you have grays, you have tans. So we have a lot of different carpet choices. Black is standard on our builds, but you do have the option to upgrade your carpet, which would be a thicker carpet and a different color. Uh, you do have USB plugs and you have a 12 volt plug so you can power all of your phones or your radar detector, your GPS, navigation, whatever you're wanting to do. So I think that covers everything on the interior and the front part of the cockpit other than air conditioning. This system is the underslung unit right here, which is an efficient system. It's a nice system, but you'll another option that you'll see if you look at Emma, the D110, we manufacture our own air conditioning and heating system, which allows you to eliminate this under slung unit. So you have more leg room, more knee room, and our system uses the existing vents and it's much more efficient, meaning that it will heat the cabin and cool the cabin. This hopping around here, you'll also see that it has the tweeters up here and the mid range here. Again, this is the hi-fi audio system and it has a fabulous sound. So let's move to the back and talk about options there. So around the back, the first thing you're gonna notice is the rear tire carrier. So rear, rear tire carrier is a standard that comes on the builds uh, depending on the design. So you'll see that this rear tire carrier is a little different than what you'll see on our D110s or our D90 soft top because this one rolls out separately. If this was a hard top, it would be attached to the rear door. You open the door, it opens with it. So this one spins out separate so you actually have access to get to the rear door. Again, on a soft top, it's a half door. A hard top, the door goes up all the way and it's just a full door basically. So we open it up like this and then you'll notice that this one actually has the mahogany floor, the mahogany cargo area is what it is. Even the rear door is done in mahogany with a black caulk. So this is a marine grade mahogany uh, and it's been covered in multiple coats of lacquer finish. So it's a very durable finish. It will give you a lot of years. I mean, it, it, it will scratch and dent a little bit, but it just adds to the patina of it and looks, it will look good. Moving into the rear area, you'll see that it's center facing benches. And I do that very often, the center facing benches for a couple different reasons. One, it gives the passengers more room. They can slide side to side more, so they have more butt room. 
Uh, the seats are sit back a little farther. So therefore, if you have four adults, which you can fit four adults back here, it gives them more knee room. So because they're not as close together as what it is. And it's pretty funny. It's amazing that when we have couples that will come over and visit us here at the farm, we're going out to dinner and they're like, oh, Paul, you drive. We want to ride in the cargo area. We're talking about adults. So it is fun. It is very classic of a Defender to have that. Um, these do fold up. I don't really see the purpose in folding up because it doesn't really save you any more space but just know they do fold up. The other option would be center facing buckets. So you'd have a seat here, a seat there, a seat there, a seat there. Again, any of the options, either one of those options give you four seat belts. The center buckets, the reason that I don't use those too much is because the lower part for your, where you sit on comes out farther here. So you really can't fit four adults back there anymore. It takes up more cargo space. And then when you're trying to fold the seats up, because the bench the actual buckets do fold up and clear up a little bit of room but it's you're having to stretch in here and fold them up and then they are more of a steel frame so there's the chance that you get those little squeaks and if you're like me and you don't like those little squeaks and the you know when you're driving it just drives me nuts uh, you might not like those bucket seats other option that you don't see me do too often but it is available is forward facing buckets the reason you don't see me do those too often is because they are quite heavy and they are very expensive. They're about $5,000 to add in, but the hard part is you have to get in here, you fold them up to get it out of the way, fold it down, they're heavy. I've smashed my finger, cut my finger a number of times. It's luckily I have not cut my finger off yet, but it's come close, I think. So that is an option though. So you have that. The cargo area, I will tell you, is the same size. So back here is the same size as a D110. Where you get the size difference in the D110 is the second row seating. That's all you gain with a D110 is the second row seating. So if you like the, the look and the design of the D110, you should definitely do it. Um, in the D110, you can remove the second row seats and get more cargo area. Just know that's an option, but the cargo area is the same. This one being the Hi-Fi system, it does have a 10-inch subwoofer. This is a custom-built subwoofer box. Uh, then right here, the rear, this is also called a rear bulkhead. So this support system is actually, it helps create uh, more rigidity in the frame. So when you're off-roading, you'll see we cut it down. So it cuts down because normally it would be almost, it would be above the actual stitching of the book pocket on the back of the seat that would run all the way across. The reason that we cut it down is we built this truck for a client that he's a little taller. And so what we've done is we've done extended seat rails so the seats come back farther and they lean back, recline more. So if you are 6'9", then we just know that. I mean, we have that discussion and we do a seat design to make sure that it fits you being a tall driver. So yes, if you're 6'9", you can definitely fit in a Defender. We just do some modifications. But that's the thing. It is a bespoke build. Questions that I ask during the build process, how tall are you? How much do you weigh? What is your sleeve length? Because we are designing this Defender to you and what your size is and also to how you're going to use it. Like if you look at any of my Defenders, the seats and the center cubby are designed for my sleeve length, meaning that the cubby is up high so I can sit steady and have my arm rested nicely. I'm not like this, or nor am I like this. So that's part of the design process. The seats themselves, then I ask, how do you like the seats to be? Do you like them to come out far under your hamstring? Because we can do all of that. Do you like more foam? So it's all designed specific to you. So this is the back end of a D90. I think it's pretty attractive. The only thing that I should probably point out on this one, another option, is you can do a rear step-up bumper on the bottom which is called an NAS bumper. It, would, it could have a two inch receiver so you can put your bike rack, you can tow something with it and we can wire it for a trailer. This one doesn't have it because we wanted the very clean design on it, but just know that that's an option. If you have any questions, if I haven't answered anything, I'd say first step is go to Helderberg.com and look for the FAQ tab in the navigation. There's many videos there so you can learn a lot about Defender lifestyle, Defender ownership, and if there's still no answer to what you're looking for specific, then send us a message and I'd be more than happy to answer whatever question you might have.